So in this video I'm going to be putting the tiny TS80 soldering iron through its paces and comparing it to my soldering stations I have here. Stick around for this one because the results even shocked me. Are you designing your circuits like a caveman? Ooh. Ooh, shiny. Huh? What? Oh yeah, the future. Make your projects look smart and professional by using a custom made PCB. Ordering is as easy as uploading your Gerber file and choosing your design preferences. Order five PCBs from as little as $2. So next time you need a custom made PCB, think about buying them through JLC PCB. They help support content creators like me making videos like this possible. So there is a couple of purchasing options when you're buying the TS80. Uh, you can just buy a bare bones kit so you just get the TS80 iron and a wedge style soldering tip. Or you can spend a little bit more money and get a earthing strap for the iron. You also get a uh, USB charger that is quick charge 3.0 capable and for probably the best reason to buy the kit is you get a really nice soft silicone high temperature USB cable to plug into the TS80. The TS80 is quite exceptionally compact and packs quite a punch for its size. It's a pleasure to hold and the body is made out of aluminium so it should stand up for many years of use. It also features quite a short grip to tip distance and if we compare it to my daily driver soldering iron you can see just how small the TS80 really is. So in the smartphone world headphone jacks are just disappearing from phones left and right and I've found where they've been putting them. Yep that's right the heater cartridge is connected using a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. Now this is one complete unit, you buy it as a complete unit, you can't just take off the tip and replace that when the time comes. And the cool thing about this is it's just plug and play. No tools are required to change the soldering tip. So when we first plug it in we get the firmware version that it's running and we can change this. Now when we first plug it in it's in kind of a standby mode. Um, if we short press the button closest to the LCD we can cycle through all the settings for the TS80 and if we long press we go out of settings and if we short press the button closest to the soldering tip we immediately go into heating mode and you can see there the temperature is climbing pretty rapidly. At the rear of the unit we have the power connector this is a USB type C connector and it's recommended by the manufacturer to have an input voltage between 9 and 12 volts with 13 volts being absolute maximum and essentially with regards to power adapters and power banks you're limited to quick charge 3.0 which means this unit depending on the power adapter can either output 18 or 24 watts of power <coughs> a soldering iron with 24 watts of power what a joke, my toothbrush has 24 watts of power, I'm out. Despite its low power rating of up to 24 watts, let's put it to the test and see how it performs. So for comparison, we're going to be using this soldering station up against the TS80. Both my soldering stations are rated for 48 watts and both of them use an older style uh, heater cartridge where the tip is replaceable and the heater cartridge stays in the handle as opposed to the more modern style where it's all in one and you've got to throw the whole thing out or replace it. But we're going to see if this makes a difference in performance and it's worth the extra cost. So let's do a drag race. First soldering iron to 350 degrees C. Both these irons are at room temperature. I'll turn them on at exactly the same time and I do have to change the uh, soldering station from Fahrenheit to Celsius because it does default to Fahrenheit every time you turn it on. So three, two, one. Yep, 
Yay, we're finally there. So clear winner, hands down, TS80. So I've got these capacitors that I want to salvage off this circuit board and as you can see they've got some rather big lugs on, on the underside of these capacitors. So I'm going to experiment by trying to heat up and desolder some of these components. Both the soldering irons are going to be set for 360 Celsius. And let's try my soldering station. I'm going to call it a draw. It was really close. I think the soldering station probably heated it up a little bit quicker, but there was really nothing in it. And besides, this test is rather an arbitrary test anyway. Let's move on to something a bit different. So I've taken some 15 millimeter copper water pipe, it's quite thick walled, and I've cut two 6mm pieces from the pipe and I have soldered them on to a piece of wire. Now I've made these as even as possible so that we've got a fair comparison and I'm going to put both soldering irons on the uh, rings at exactly the same time and we're going to see which ring falls from the wire first, which should translate to which soldering iron has heated up the copper ring fastest. So to make it as fair as possible, I'll just put some fresh solder on each of the irons. Okay, three, two, one. Um, what just happened? Best of five. So I'm going to alternate changing soldering irons each round so that I can keep it as fair as possible. So here we go. Three, two, one. What? Again? Can't be. So let's rule out the possibility that one of these soldering irons is running a lot hotter than the other. I've got my K-type thermal couple here and let's have a look at what temperature these irons are running at. So the soldering station is pretty much spot on. Nope, the TS80 wasn't cheating either, they're both around the same temperature. So why is the TS80 able to outperform my soldering station? I mean, it's only half the power of my soldering station. It doesn't make sense. Well, actually, it does make sense. And I'll tell you why. It comes down to advancements in technology. You see, these older style soldering irons with the removable tip are often quite slow to respond to temperature changes whereas the more modern style cartridges that have the heater element incorporated into the soldering tip are very fast to respond to temperature changes so though it's half the power output of my soldering station it's very responsive and it can throw all of the 24 watts in straight away when you need it as opposed to the soldering station which is always trying to catch up, it lags behind, it's nowhere near as responsive and that's why the TS80 is outperforming it. So obviously the TS80 is more than capable of soldering all your circuit boards but what if you were going to solder something like an 8 gauge copper cable like I have here? Well let's try it out. Wow, the TS80 is actually making really light work of that. Piece of cake, no worries. So if you're a curious sort like myself, you'll wonder what happens when you try to power the TS80 from a 5 volt USB outlet. Well, it turns on. Let's try heating the tip up. Uh-oh, low volts. So, as the manufacturer said, really, you've got to use a power bank or adapter that's capable of Quick Charge 3.0. Another really cool feature is the ability to flash custom firmware onto the TS80. We can add additional features and, and all sorts of things, and it's really simple to do. 
to do it, all is you need is a couple of files. Now I'll put links to download these in the video's description. I didn't make them, an open source community has. Um, we've got two firmwares. If you don't like the custom firmware, you can just put the stock firmware back on. And then we've got the um, custom firmware by Ralim, or Raylim. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. To flash the firmware to the TS80 is really simple. We're going to hold down this button and while we're pressing it we're going to plug in the USB cable. Now we can release the button because the TS80 is now in DFU mode. And we get this um, device pop up, it kind of looks like a flash drive. And all I'm going to do is drag over my custom firmware file which is a .hex copy it over to the TS80 wait for it to complete transferring it'll pop up, uh, the window will pop up a second time and you notice it says TS80.ready so now that that's popped up we can unplug the USB cable plug it back in and we're actually running custom firmware now we got a low volt warning when we plugged the TS80 into a standard 5 volt USB outlet. But now we're running custom firmware, we unlock the ability to run the TS80 from 5 volts. Now out of the box I can understand why the manufacturer disabled this feature, because if you look at the temperature it, it's very slow to heat up from 5 volts. But I can't see any harm in having the feature enabled because if I had a choice between a slow soldering iron or no soldering iron I would take the slow one every day of the week. The custom firmware also adds a multitude of extra features, heaps of sub menus, more than I can go through in this video. So if you want to check out all the extra features this firmware adds just check out the links in the video's description. So after seeing the surprising performance the TS80 offers, I would like to make this my daily use soldering iron and replace my soldering station here. But in its current form it just feels a little unfinished. What I'd really like to do is take the TS80 and turn it into a soldering station so that we've got a holder for the iron, uh, we've got a holder for a sponge to clean the soldering tip, uh, we've got a place to house the power adapter for it and also an on off switch. I would also like to add a really cool feature and make the soldering station also have an internal battery so that you can use it uh, disconnected from the mains. You don't need a power plug to operate it, you could take it out in the middle of the forest and solder with it. So if you want to see that video when I finish making it, uh, there'll be a link pop up in the video's corner once I've uploaded that video and also hit the subscribe button so that you're notified when I do upload that video. So thank you very much for joining me in this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like. It'll be much appreciated. If you have any comments, leave them down below. Other than that, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.